Oh, it's recording. Hey, y'all. Happy Friday. It's uh, October 23rd, 2020. Uh, welcome to another edition of Forensic Science with me, Mr. B. I'm glad you're here. I just want to shout y'all out uh, for doing so well on last week's project. Y'all y'all had some really interesting and funny photos. Um, so shout out to y'all. Keep them coming. If you have not turned them in, just go back and, and just go back and do last week's assignment. So today we are going to break down uh, what an eyewitness is and what testimonial evidence is. We're still in the crime scene. We're just, we're starting to build our case, right? We're starting to build our case against crime and against potential criminals. First off, evidence. Every case needs it. If you want to solve the case, you need it, right? You can't, sure, you can tell somebody, um, you can say something, you can say, Mr. B, you took my money, or uh, Panchito or Panchita, they, they stole money from a bank of those sorts. You can say things like that, but you need evidence, you need proof of that happening. But we're going to talk about the two different types of proof. First one is physical evidence. We're not going to dive deep into that one just yet. The next one up is testimonial evidence. So these are your two different types of proof. Your physical evidence is really more tangible. It means you can touch it or see it. It's, uh, it's usually like blood or broken glass or a weapon. So you usually are able to touch it, it's physical. But really, testimonial evidence, that's the one we wanna focus on. That has to deal more with your words, with what you see, what you say afterwards. And remember, a good way to think about evidence, it's the missing puzzle piece. It's how you solve the puzzle of what a crime is. So what is an eyewitness? We want to break this down, right? Think about the word, see the word, eyewitness. And so based on that, it seems like we're dealing with seeing something, right? We are, I think that's pretty straightforward. We're able to see something. So for example, bear with me, right? We see our, our good old friend, Cookie Monster, just hanging out, trying to do some work, right? All of a sudden, hey, he notices there's some cookies hanging out. He's not supposed to eat those cookies, but they look so good, Mr. B. They look so good. You guys, they smell so good right now. You can't resist. He cannot resist it. And eventually he succumbs to the desire, everybody's desire to eat some chocolate chip cookies. So if I were to say, right, something occurred, an event occurred. And I asked you, what happened to the cookies? Who ate them? Well, you probably would answer, well, the cookie monster ate them, right? That's, he, that's what happened. They got eaten. In that case, you would be a night witness. You're a night witness for this event. To break it down a little bit more, right? It's a night witness, you just have to see something happen. You have to see a crime happen. In this case, we're talking about a crime, but it can also be an accident. It can honestly be any event occurring. The person who sees that is considered the eyewitness. And so this eyewitness, right? You telling me about Cookie Monster, you telling me like, well, he's the one that ate them. Uh, he ate them pretty quickly. He couldn't, it seemed like he was trying to hold back, but no, he definitely wanted to eat them. You telling me that, you saying that either by writing it down or with your words, that's considered testimonial evidence. And so again, that's all that is, is you either have to write something down, you have to say something, and you're giving this, uh, you're giving your account, right? You're giving your version of what happened in this event. And so you usually give this to police, uh, you would also, you could also give it to a lawyer as shown in the photo, you might be able to, you might have to sit down as a witness, as an eyewitness and the lawyer would just ask this in court. So again, this is used both in court and at the crime scene. Uh, and this is what police use to solve crime sometimes. But, but there's certain issues with this. Um, this can be super helpful. 
this can be definitely helpful for solving crimes, right? If you're able to have a bunch of eyewitnesses um, and they're all around the same thing, you can kind of get a, a good idea of what happened. Because most of the time, police, detectives, they weren't there. And so they have to start putting the puzzle together. But it's not highly reliable. Say that again with me. It is not highly reliable, meaning it's not very trustworthy, right? And it can be a little flimsy to say the least. And that's just because our memory is not very good as people. You might think it's really good, but we can be very, we can be influenced a lot uh, just by a lot of things. Um, and we have, and those things that we say, this testimony of evidence has a lot of influence on an investigation or trial. This also takes part in separated and witness. Think back to our seven steps or six steps of securing a crime scene. Separating the witness, that's our second step. We want to push them away so they don't talk and they don't make up their eyewitness accounts. Again, memory can be very tricky. So we all can see, say we're, saying we're looking at the same thing, the same scene. It can be a big old grand opening of a store and we're all there, but you know, we might be in different places or we might be at different heights. So we're seeing it from a different angle. You might be more familiar with the area than I am. Maybe it's around your neighborhood and I'm just there watching the new target open up. Um, and there's so many other things. So this all can interfere with the person's ability to remember all the small little details. And so I want you to think about, this is Central Park in New York. And I, I put down a different, uh, different amount of photos just to show you that, well, if you're in the park, right, it's gonna look massive. It's gonna look so big. It's a huge park in the middle of all these buildings. But if you're over here, right, you might have a different angle. Well, now you can tell it's, a, it's pretty symmetrical, right? It's like a square, but if you're in this angle, you might be able to see a different types of buildings. Some buildings might be in the way. So again, it, it creates our memory a little differently. And it all dep depends where you're at. Some other things that might, you know, crime occurs, Cookie Monster strikes again, and you become a witness. There's other factors that go into play on how well you remember and how well you'll do finding the culprit, you know, the person that did this crime. And so age plays a role, definitely. Uh, in a lineup, as shown here, I'm sure you've seen a lineup before where these are, and we'll talk about lineups more uh, next week. These are where uh, criminals are lined up, or not criminals, but people are brought in that kind of fit a description, right? Of what, of, let's say you say, well, Mr. B, uh, I don't know, you don't know Cookie Monster's name. You, you know, he created something, but he's blue. He was blue, he was big. You start giving me a description of the person. Well, police are gonna bring in people that kind of match that description. And what affects what you remember, again, is your age. Honestly, young children and older people do pretty well whenever they do pretty well at finding the culprit whenever they're in the lineup. However, when they're not in the lineup, there's a higher chance of them getting it wrong and picking somebody that's innocent. There's also a thing called the cross race effect. So what that is, it's a phenomenon in which people are later or are better at recognizing faces of their own race rather than another race. So it definitely plays a role in this. Uh, a person's memory can also affect like just your personal memory. Um, it can be affected by, you know, maybe you talk to your parents and you tell them a story, the one version of it, and then you talk to police and they're like, pressing you and so then you kind of change your story you're not trying to change it but you just kind of maybe you see something on the news that again changes the way you think about it and the way you remember it and honestly if you're using drugs or alcohol that's also going to affect your memory and affect the witness so again we're not eyewitnesses are not the most reliable um method of evidence it's not to say that eyewitnesses are always lying, that's all I'm saying. It's just not as reliable as the physical evidence. 
And so sometimes if it's a gruesome murder, that might affect how you remember it. You might not register it in your brain as, as much as if it was a, like a regular, I don't know, just, I don't know, somebody taking a purse, like just sneaking a purse out of, out of the way. Uh, there's some characteristics of the witness. If they have a big tattoo on their face, right? You might remember that better. If they just look pretty normal, it might be harder to pick them out. And how is the information received? Are you listening to head to music with headphones? So you can't really listen, you can't hear everything. And some other things, your witness prior relationship with the accused, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a friend that is being accused of something. So you saw it, but that also might affect your memory. And if a police or a detective comes and asks you, hey, what happened two years ago on September 2018? You might think back and be like, I don't remember. And so that, that, might, that might also affect how you remember that event. So I want us to play a little bit of our memory game. What do you see below? Go ahead and pause right now. What do you see below? All right, I hope you took some time and actually paused it because if you said old lady, well, I believe you. If you look at this, that's her eye. This is her nose. This is her chin and her mouth. And this is her hair. And whoa, I can see an old lady. Now, some of you might be shocked. You're like, that's not what I saw, but that's crazy. I saw the younger lady that's looking away. This is her hair still, but this time, look, that's her nose. This is her eyelash. This is her ear. This is her chin in the back of her, uh, your, her head and her neck. She's wearing a fur coat still and some like scarf, right? So you can see two different things. Again, our eyes can seen as believing, but sometimes it can be a little tricky. Last but not least, y'all, we're going to watch this quick video to show you. And One of the things that... Show uh, me how much memory is uh, a little tricky. I and my colleagues did is to try to get people to remember that they met and shook hands with Bugs Bunny at Disneyland. This would be impossible because Bugs is a Warner Brothers character and wouldn't be allowed okay. at Disney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, but, and so how do we get people to believe that? We give them an ad to evaluate. So here's a fake ad for Disney and you can see Disney in the castle and there's Bugs. And they, they review the ad. They just tell us how much they like it. Do they like the- They made a fake ad here, y'all. A fake ad. This is not a real ad. Colors. Do they like the layout? It, mm -hmm. But later on, when we say, "Tell tell us about your your one of your childhood trips to Disney," which characters do you remember meeting? Do you remember meeting Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, The Little Mermaid, Bugs Bunny? We will get lots of people to tell us they remember meeting Bugs. Oh. And then when they get pressed for details, they'll say they shook his hand. They'll say they touched his tail. Oh. They'll say he he was eating. One said he was eating a carrot. Oh. One said, you know, a few said he said. So it becomes uh, real. It becomes real. Oh, they they God. embellish it with detail, and it looks every bit like a real memory. Yeah. Even though it couldn't have happened. So, again, that's just to go to show you that we can shape memories, right? They went back, and we're actually pretending they made that fake ad, and all of a sudden. They showed them that ad and pe these people were like, well, yeah, now I remember it way back in when I was four or five, I remember, you know, actually taking a photo with bugs. And so again, memory is tricky. You could play around a lot with it. Okay, y'all, that's it for this week. I'm sorry if the video was a little longer than usual, but next week we might get a chance to uh, practice our composite drawing. And we might get a chance to also play detective and you might have to create a scene of sorts. Again, I'll explain a little bit more next week, but hope y'all have a great week. We'll see y'all later. Let me know if you have any questions, y'all. Bye.